Once in a while, I like to take the time to go ahead and take a Mises blog post and completely prove it to be completely untrue. Take this one for example. A fellow Canadian, Mike Reed, put forward the idea that the crimes that were carried out against the indigenous people with religious schools, you know, the, the residential school system, was all the fault of government and that government is racist. And this was all the government's fault. Actually attributing human characteristics to a non-living entity that doesn't have consciousness or free will of its own. Now I know that seems insane or that I may be actually be taking his argument the wrong way. No, that's literally actually what it is. He's actually saying brutality and racism was carried out by the state. Not the people in the state, not the religious organizations that actually carried out the education and everything that they did. It was actually the state that did all of this. Now, here's how he actually lays it out from the start. The great anti-fascist scholar Ludwig von Mises warned that the government schools are an inevitable source of ethnic conflict because dominant nationalities can use them to indoctrinate children from other cultures, pulling them away from their parents and communities. In Canada, this was explicitly the aim of the Indian residential schools, which sought to kill the Indian and the child. So, if there was a state where there was only one nationality or one ethnic group, then it couldn't happen. Okay? But the implication here is that this kind of thing couldn't have happened in private schools. Based on what? In this entire, the entire article, he never actually proposes why this is supposedly true. Like, he never gives any evidence or even a single reason as to why this would not happen in a public school system. I mean, this is completely untrue. There have been plenty of private schools that were racist. Not so many in Canada because we largely don't have a, have a private education system. But take the United States, for example. How many of the elite education institutions which were private were horribly anti-Semitic? And I don't just mean by not letting Jews in, by Jews even getting in, and they were still persecuted against. I mean, this continued. This continued for a long time and to a large degree continues to this day. To, to actually claim that private schools couldn't be racist is a complete lie. States aren't racist. People in the states are racist. The social attitudes of the country are racist. The whole beating the Indian out of the child thing was about getting, taking the Aboriginal peoples and assimilating them into the culture. Because the culture wanted that. The people of Canada thought it was a good idea at the time. Not because government is inherently evil and wants to destroy indigenous communities and destroy indigenous cultures. I come from an indigenous people myself. The state doesn't do that. People do that. If you go to Norway right now, you can see the extensive efforts the state carries out to protect Sami culture, language, education, livelihoods, and all of it. But that shouldn't actually be possible because states can only be racist according to this guy. And that, the, by no means is it just this guy, but it's the entire libertarian logic. There are apparently no bad people, there's just bad states. But that the state is an entity onto itself and that it's alive and has its own thoughts, feelings and emotions and its own free will. Now, now he continues to go on. The goal was to take kids away from their disobedient barbarian parents and make them into submissive, civilized British subjects. Yes, but that is what the people in the government wanted and what the people of Canada wanted and thought what was best. This was in no way unique just to the government. I mean, to say that just the government wanted this or that this, was, this only happened because of government is a complete lie. I mean, this is an outright lie. I mean, there are, race, there are racist private schools inside of Canada. There are Jewish, private Jewish schools that say non-Jews are basically unworthy and not the chosen people and God hates them and stuff like that. And there's private Islamic schools in Canada that teach that Jews are subhuman and God hates them. But apparently this can't happen because it's not run by the state. Like, it's only state schools that can be racist. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. This is literally the same thing as the, oh, uh, guns, people don't kill people, guns kill people. 
A state only does what the people in it who run it tell it to do. It's not a thinking entity onto itself. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. This is, this is giving human attributes to something that's not alive. This is, this is insane. And not only that, he goes and takes the crimes committed by religious orders who have since apologized for th the things that they've done to the indigenous people, which is nowhere near enough, and actually blames the state for what the churches did. The state hired clergymen to run the school partly because they were cheap to hire, and as a result, many former students identify their awful experiences with Christ missionary Christians rather than with coercive government. So in other words, the religions didn't hurt anybody. The religious institutions didn't hurt anybody. It wasn't a holy person that uh, raped children, beat them, persecuted them, destroyed their culture. It was a state employee that did it. And there was no religious context to it whatsoever. The Christianity in no way, shape, or form actually seeks to stamp out other religions. Except that that's what they're always doing. And most of the persecution that has been carried out upon indigenous persons were carried out by Christians. This is ridiculous. This is like taking manifest destiny and essentially equivalent to taking manifest destiny and blaming it on the state when it was clearly a Christian concept. This is absolutely ridiculous. And it doesn't even stop there. He goes on to completely contradict himself as well. He says that uh, the Aboriginal societies at the time were starving because of their collect, their socialist collectivist type atmosphere, but then turns around and says they're anarchic and voluntary. Like almost literally the next paragraph. So he's completely contradicting himself and saying that the, they had to take children away from indigenous people because they taught their kids to be uh, rebellious and to uh, resist authority and to be independent. Well, you just called it a socialist collective. And well, we know what you think of socialist collectives where everybody's brainwashed. Well, which is it? Are these kids brainwashed into a, into a fascist evil collective? Or are they taught to be independent? Well, which is it? I mean, it's ridiculous. The guy can't even keep his own arguments straight in this. Now, he proves really how white he is and how ridiculously uninformed of the material conditions that pervaded. Now, this is, this is not him in any way, shape, or form. This is the whole market fundamentalist ideology. This is all completely denying the way things are and the conditions that lead things to be the way they are and then just make a claim. The socialist collective type uh, society is what caused there to be so much starvation in the, uh, in the reservations. No. Actually, they were functioning in a collective way since, since, actually, since any time that we can actually prove. You see, there's this little thing that they call being nomadic. Now, a lot of these tribes, these what we now call nations, followed herds of animals, their food source, and were nomadic in collecting food and going to different areas when the food was gone and then eventually have a pattern of returning once they had regrown to follow the plants that they use for food and the animals they use for food. Of course, you can't actually do this when you're locked in a reservation that's not even 1% of the actual amount of territory those individual tribes actually moved around in. He's basically just blaming, by default, socialism for the fact that they're now trapped, trapped in reservations. Like, like, somehow, completely changing the material conditions by which they, they live is now the fault of the collective order they had before the material conditions were changed. That's stupid. That's like having a car taking out the engine, putting in a motorcycle engine, and then it not working, and then saying, see, cars don't work. That's, it's just, comp it, it completely detached from reality. And that's what it is, detached from the material conditions that actually existed before and after. I mean, this, this is ridiculous. What I see definitely from this is white guilt. Now, it's normally pointed to the left, oh, we've got white guilt. Because, of course, it's guilt whenever you admit that a crime against the people happened. He's trying to take the actions by white people, white Christians, and the persecution they carried out against First Nations Aboriginal people, 
and blame it on the state. Because there's a whole religious context to this as well. This was about colonization, not the state just being the state. The state was carrying out somebody's will, the will of the people who actually control the state, the ruling class. And even then, the majority of the people in Canada, even the working class, agreed with what was going on. Not the abuse, but forcing them off the reservations, modernizing, changing their clothes, and killing off their culture. The government is not an entity onto itself, okay? It does what the people in it do. As the example I gave from Norway, how in the indigenous, um, the indigenous culture was treated the same way, and then now it's done a complete 180 and does everything to protect the culture and the indigenous people. But the state is inherently bad and evil and wants to destroy indigenous people. I mean, the guy puts forward possibly one of the, the single worst arguments I have ever seen. Now, what's frightening about this? He teaches anthropology at the University of Winnipeg. Oh, the second largest public education uh, institution in Manitoba. I could turn around and call him a hypocrite for working at a, a, at a state school. But if he works for a state school, then it's going to make him racist and want to abuse children because that's what states do, according to him. This is absolutely ridiculous. There's actually far more to this article, even more. And there's more points that I would actually like to make. I don't have the time to do it here, but if you go to the link in the description, you'll see uh, my blog post that gives more information on this and a link to the original, incredibly insane article. I mean, this is the fact that this is a person who teaches anthropology, someone who doesn't even have the first clue of what the material conditions then and now, it's frightening. This person is an educator.